Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. This is the part 3 of Diseases of Immune System series. In the first two parts, we had discussed about you know general basic concepts of immunity, that's innate immunity and adaptive immunity, and then the various cells involved in innate and adaptive immunity. Continuing with the basics of uh, immunity, in this session, let's learn in detail about major histocompatibility complex. So, in the next few minutes, let's look into what this major histocompatibility complex is. We will understand the structure of MHC, significance of MHC and then some of the diseases associated with major histocompatibility complex. So, what is this major histocompatibility complex? These are uh, nothing but the molecules which are present on the surface of the cells. In humans, they were initially detected on leukocytes and that's the reason why they are referred to as human leukocyte antigens as well. The genes which encodes major histocompatibility complex are human leukocyte antigens. They are present on chromosome number 6 particularly, the short arm of chromosome number 6. HLA or MHC, you know, they play a very major role or a crucial role in immune system you know, what do they do? They display peptide fragments, which are nothing but the antigens. And these antigens can either be derived from both the cell's normal protein processing or it can be derived from pathogens such as viruses and bacteria. And that's how they enable the immune system to detect these pathogens as well as to respond to these pathogens. So, this constitutes our body's defense mechanism against various infection and diseases. And, and it is also important to note that these are the major immunogens and their targets in transplant rejection. Now, let us see the structure of MHC class 1 molecule. Consider that this is a cell membrane and that's the MHC complex which contains a heavy chain which has three domains, alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3. So, this is an alpha heavy chain. Remember that this heavy chain spans across the cell membrane and a very small chain or a light chain which is beta 2. So, this beta 2 light chain is non-covalently associated with the alpha chain and it is also important to note that this beta 2 chain does not span across the cell membrane. So, these are class 1 molecules which are present on all nucleated cells and platelets. And these are the molecules which are recognized by CD8 positive T lymphocytes. See, the main function of this MHC class 1 molecule is that it presents endogenous antigens. You know, the endogenous antigens means they are typically derived from cells' own proteins or proteins from intracellular pathogens like viruses. Okay, and as I told you, they are recognized by CD8 positive T cells, and these are cytotoxic T cells. So, moving on to understand the structure of MHC class 2 molecules, remember that the genes encoding this MHC class 2 molecule is HLA-D gene. And within this HLA-D region, okay, you have HLA-DR, HLA-DQ, and HLA-DP. In contrast to MHC class 1 molecule, MHC class 2 molecules contain two chains. One is alpha chain, another is beta chain. See that both these chains transverse, you know, across the cell membrane. Alpha chain is composed of two subunits, alpha 1 and alpha 2. Beta chain is comprised of two subunits again, beta 1 and beta 2. These are basically domains, beta 1 domain and beta 2 domain of the beta chain. So, what are the kinds of cells where you find these MHC class 2 molecules? They are present on cells which present ingested antigens, you know, and they and the ones who respond to T cell help, they include macrophages, B lymphocytes and dendritic cells, you know, and these are the kind of antigens which are recognized by CD4 positive T cells. These are helper T cells. The main function of MHC class 2 molecule is to present the exogenous antigens, particularly which are derived from extracellular pathogens. But remember, they don't bind and attach to the extracellular pathogen. Rather, these antigens are ingested by the cells. Okay, The cells meaning the macrophages ingest those antigens on the extracellular pathogen. And within the macrophages, they are processed 
and then they are displayed onto the MHC class 2 molecules. And once the processed antigen is there on the MHC molecule, MHC class 2 molecule, these are recognized by CD4 positive T cells and they are helper T cells. So now, um, now I hope you have understood the differences between MHC class 1 molecule and class 2 molecules, right? Class 1 molecules are recognized by cytotoxic T cells, which are CD8 positive T cells, whereas class 2 molecules are recognized by CD4 positive or helper T cells. And class 1 molecule, it has one single chain and a very small light chain. Here you have alpha and beta chains, both of which spans across the cell membrane, right? So, one present antigen, which is often internal, you know, endogenous antigens, whereas class 2 present antigen, which is exogenous, but then they are phagocytosed by these macrophages and then they are presented onto the MHC class 2 molecule. So, there is another class of MHC, which is called as MHC class 3. They represent certain complement components, but then they are not histocompatibility antigens per se. Now, let us understand the concept of HLA haplotype. So, what do you mean by HLA haplotype? These are basically unique set of HLA alleles or human leukocyte antigen alleles which are inherited from, which are inherited together from a single parent. So, that means each individual has two HLA haplotypes, right? Each one which is inherited from one parent. So, that means you have one HLA haplotype from father, another HLA haplotype from mother. This particular combination of two HLA haplotypes forms a part of genetic signature and they are very, very important, particularly in relation to the immune function. So, we all know that the HLA genes are very, very highly polymorphic and that is the reason why there can be huge range of possible HLA gene combinations in human population. So, there is a, a database called International Immunogenetics Information System or HLA database. So, this is the website of that particular database where you can actually, you know, know the number of HLA which has been. If you see this particular database, if you see this document, you can easily make out that there are around 38,000 different types of HLA alleles. So, given the polymorphism, given the diversity of HLA alleles, and we also know that HLA is very important component in terms of immune rejection. So, that is why we need to have transplantations where there will be no rejections, right? And if, if at all you want to have no rejections, both the donor and the recipient should have similar HLA, right? And that's absolutely impossible because of so much of diversity, except that there is an identical twin. But then the closest one could be sibling. Now, why siblings can be donors? Because we know that each haplotype, HLA haplotype, is inherited as a block from one particular parent. So, there are two sets of genes, one from each parent, right? So, the chances that the siblings will have the same major histocompatibility complex is one in four. And that is why siblings are good candidates for organ or stem cell donations. So, the reason for that is the closer the HLA match, the lower is the risk of immune system rejecting the transplantation, rejecting the transplant. That, that, that's the reason why HLA matching has to be done before any organ transplantation or stem cell transplantation. Now, we have studied <clears throat> about the structure of HLA, the structure of MHC molecule or HLA. So, what is the clinical significance of knowing this? It's very important to note that HLA uh, affects our immune system by recognizing and responding to infections. Let us assume that if the HLA presents pollen and there is a response, okay, these individuals are the ones who can be very much prone to allergies. So, the most important function being HLA's ident you know, role in identifying harmful bacteria and thereby activate B cell to produce antibodies. They can activate macrophages and also result in phagocytosis and that's how there will be resistance to infections. And we have seen that in case of class 1 molecule, there is cytotoxic T lymphocyte mediated killing of cells which harbor cytoplasmic microbes and tumor antigens. So, what did we understand so far? We understood that HLA genes which are present on the chromosome number 6 
which encodes the major histocompatibility proteins in humans or molecules in humans right now we know that hla the genes are hla a b c and d under hla d you have dr dq and dp subset so at this point we should know that there are certain hla alleles which is seen to be associated or which are which are found to be associated with an increased risk of autoimmune diseases okay so let us see let us see uh, and uh, understand what are all the kind of autoimmune diseases which can be associated with various hla antigens or hla associations so the first and the foremost thing is that let us see hla class 1 associations first one is hla b8 if the person is found to be having this hla b8 these are the ones who are you know who are associated with myasthenia gravis you should know that myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disorder which disrupts communication between nerve and muscles and that's how they have weakness of muscle the second one is hla b27 which is very very strongly associated with ankylosing spondylitis see this ankylosing spondylitis is a type of arthritis which affects the spine and thereby leading to inflammation and pain in these individuals so hla c6 is associated with or linked with psoriasis and this is a condition where there is rapid epidermal proliferation resulting in thick red scaly patches on the skin so the important hla class 1 associations include myasthenia gravis ankylosing spondylitis and psoriasis let us now look into hla class 2 associations the first one being hla dr2 which is associated with multiple sclerosis which is an autoimmune disorder again which affects the central neural nervous system leading to demyelination and various neurological symptoms second one is hla dr3 leading to myasthenia gravis just like the one what we saw in hla b8 and another important syndrome associated is zogren syndrome this is the one which result in the disease of the salivary glands autoimmune disease involved in the salivary gland similarly hla dr2 and dr3 both alleles are associated with systemic lupus erythematosus which is a multi system autoimmune disease hla dr4 is associated with rheumatoid arthritis this is again uh, an autoimmune disease which is associated with chronic inflammation of joints hla dr3 and dr4 both are associated with addison disease and type 1 diabetes so in this case you know the uh, immune system destroys the insulin producing cells in the pancreas particularly in type 1 diabetes whereas addison disease is the one which affects the adrenal glands so moving on to hla uh, dq8 and d Q2. Both these are uh, linked with celiac disease, where this is a condition where ingestion of gluten leads to damage of the small intestine. That's why it's called gluten sensitive enteropathy. Okay, so these are few of the diseases which are associated with HLA. Okay, just remember that myasthenia gravis, ankylosing spondylitis, psoriasis are the common examples which is associated with class one HLA, whereas class two associations include. no multiple sclerosis most important being sla and rheumatoid arthritis then type 1 diabetes as well as celiac disease of course there are a lot many diseases which can be associated as of now just remember these are the commoner ones which you should remember so that's all about uh, hla or mhc so we uh, learned about the structure of mhc molecule we learned about the significance of understanding these mhc molecules and some of the diseases associated with various mhc molecule thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe and from next session onwards we will discuss about hypersensitivity reactions okay starting with type 1 hypersensitivity do share if you find this video useful thank you